Today we got something really special to look at. I ordered these a while ago and they have finally arrived. Fake Joy-Cons. Now when I say fake, I don't just mean that these look like Joy-Cons and aren't, but actually these are controllers that are wireless that will work for the Switch. And they just happen to look like Joy-Cons, but like something's not quite right. Now these cost us just a little under 30 bucks, so a good bit under half the price of an actual set of Joy-Cons, but to be honest, you can find these for even cheaper depending on where you buy them from. We just wanted to get the fastest shipping possible so we could get our hands on them and check it out. So we're gonna put these side by side with real Joy-Cons to see what exactly is different about them, what is probably worse, and maybe even what is surprisingly the same or even better. First, I just wanna take a look at how these Joy-Cons actually line up with the real thing. So we've got the fake left Joy-Con with a real right Joy-Con, and some differences are pretty immediately noticeable. I think one of the first big things is that the fake ones are a lot bigger. They're noticeably wider than real Joy-Cons. And something that might make that even stand out more so is that when you're actually holding these, they are really, really light. It almost feels like there's nothing at all inside of the Joy-Con shell itself, which worries me a little bit because we actually haven't tried connecting this to the Switch yet, but assuming that there's functional stuff in here, uh, it is surprisingly light. Now, aside from the general difference in shape and how all the buttons and everything are just a little off different alignment, there are some differences too with just how everything is designed. The plus and minus buttons are these big old squares instead of being the actual shapes. There's a D-pad on the left one, which is actually something I kind of appreciate. Uh, the sticks actually look like the same style of stick, which surprises me. Uh, and then again, with the capture and home buttons, it does look similar. The right home button does look different on the other Joy-Con. We'll hold that up separately. So yeah, there's a lot of pretty noticeable differences right here. I think that with these fake ones, if you just had them by themselves, you might have a moment where you have to double take and be like, wait, that's not right. But side by side, yeah, you can really see it. Also, one little thing I appreciate, there's just a random oval at the bottom of the left Joy-Con. I think that's supposed to be kind of the Nintendo logo. They can't actually put the word Nintendo in there, so you just get an oval. There are also a couple of the differences on the inside of these Joy-Cons. So it has a rail that looks very similar and you do still have the shoulder buttons right here. But in addition, there's also actually a USB-C port. The reason being is that these don't actually charge the way regular Joy-Cons charge. You can't just put it on the switch and leave it be. You have to charge them individually. They also have a significantly lower battery life of four hours. So let's actually sync these to the switch. And it takes a couple more steps than normally would with traditional Joy-Cons. First, you actually have to turn these on for them to start searching for a switch to connect to. And the way you do that is by holding left on the D-pad and the screenshot button to turn on the left Joy-Con. You can see the light going on right now. And then for the right Joy-Con, you hold Y and the home button. Once they're both on, wait for the lights to solidify. One of them did it, come on. Come on, other guy, you can do it. Thinking, thinking, there it is. And then to actually do the normal pairing as per usual, just hit the shoulder buttons. And there we go. And it even reads them as Joy-Cons that are paired. It doesn't read them as some other kind of controller or anything like that. It displays two gray Joy-Cons. So now that we're all connected, let's go ahead and test out with some actual games and we'll start with a good old classic, Zelda. Now, one of the things I do notice right away while playing is that the sticks actually do feel pretty good. I almost wonder if these are actually like either overstock or really high quality sticks they just found that it feels like the Switch sticks. It has the right amount of resistance. The stick heads feel the same. Uh, that part's pretty much the exact same experience, which is cool. Where I don't notice the same experience though is every other button on here. Uh, the, the front facing buttons right now just feel really stiff. Like it's not a very, all the buttons on a real Joy-Con are very clicky. There's not a lot of distance to travel. There's a very immediate tactile feel. With these though, you're pressing down a lot further and it just feels hollow, if that makes sense. Now the same isn't exactly true for everything else though, like the shoulder buttons and the plus and minus buttons. These do have a little bit more of a clickiness that feels like an actual Joy-Con, but it's almost too small of an area actually. Like it doesn't really press down much and the triggers themselves are probably the worst part. It doesn't really feel like an actual small lever pull like you get with the Joy-Cons. You're just kind of pressing it down and it feels like you're kind of pressing it. It doesn't, doesn't have a very good pushback. Something that's also really distracting with using these Joy-Cons in handheld mode is that they don't actually connect to the Switch directly. Like even when you're using them in handheld mode like this, they're still connecting wirelessly. And so you can actually see the lights on for syncing to it 
at all times, and that can be very distracting mid-game. It's not a great look. The grip on these are also a little different too, actually I'm noticing more and more now. So if you can actually see here, there's this light lip going on the inside, whereas on the actual Joy-Cons, it's just one smooth surface. I guess it's not super uncomfortable. It's not a big loss, it just feels strange by comparison. So, so far in handheld mode, I'm not really a big fan, but let's try these in a wireless setup and see if maybe the larger size and the rearrangement of the buttons makes it a little more comfortable. By the way, if you're wondering about this blue switch that we're using in today's video, this is actually a skin that's made by today's sponsor, Dbrand. They make a whole line of switch skins that are totally safe to use on the switch itself, the dock, and even the Joy-Cons, the real Joy-Cons, not the fake ones in today's video. If you're interested in checking out the different colors and designs they have, check out the link down below. Playing some Smash Brothers, uh, I gotta say that still the buttons on these are not good, really, by any measure. The sticks still surprise me. They feel just like a regular switch, uh, but something that is a little more in their favor, I do think they're more comfortable because of the larger size. It fits in the grip of my hand a little nicer. It's not like I'm, I'm not having as tight of a grip. So it is working out a little better in that sense. I don't know if it's worth the trade off of everything else, but it does make me kind of want bigger Joy-Cons from Nintendo now. Oh, also these do have rumble by the way. So that surprises me a lot because considering how light they are, I did not expect rumble motors in here. Uh, they're not particularly good. It's a very, light and rapid shake. Uh, it's not giving you the same kind of thing as the HD Rumble in Joy-Cons. Uh, but if you just wanna make sure you have Rumble, these do have those, which I appreciate. Still, none of the other special functions of Joy-Cons though, like scanning amiibos or motion controls. I'm actually gonna reset these up because now I wanna try just a single Joy-Con sideways and see how that works out for this redone shape. And yeah, again, the larger size on this actually does come in handy. I think this is more comfortable than using a regular Joy-Con sideways. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would still prefer some kind of actual grip to put it in, but if it's the choice between a Joy-Con by itself or this by itself sideways, this is comfier. And actually, now that we're in this mode too, let's see how these shoulder buttons work out. Yeah, okay, that's actually, not, that's not bad. That's about on par with what you get on the normal Joy-Cons. They're still very tiny, and it's just that little, just tiny snap of a button push. Uh, so about the same as a real Joy-Con. After playing with these a while, I gotta say, it feels like the purest form of that whole meme of what the second player controller was like growing up as a kid, where, yeah, all the right buttons are here and it works, it's just weird, not particularly great. I think a lot of third party controllers have come a long way in actually being good options that are competitive and this just goes right back to that old feeling. Are they cheap? Yes. Do they work? Yes. Are they worth grabbing? Yeah. <laughs> 